Welcome to the Pharmacist Voice Podcast, episode 270. I'm your host, Kim Newlove. Today on the podcast, I've got my friend Steve Stewart. He is a professional podcast editor. He's here to talk about the benefits of hiring a podcast editor and how he can help you hire a podcast editor for your podcast. If you are new to this podcast, welcome. Again, my name is Kim Newlove. I'm the host. I am a pharmacist by training. I went to the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy and graduated with my BS Farm in 2001. As of 2017, I'm not in clinical practice anymore. I am a voice actor and a podcast host. I've been a podcaster for about four, four and a half years. And a common question that I get asked by other pharmacists is, how did you start your podcast? In response to that, I created a self-paced online podcast planning course for pharmacy professionals. You can find that at kimnewlove.com, or you can go to thepharmacistsvoice.com, click on the store tab, and find it there. You can also find the show notes for this episode on that website, thepharmacistsvoice.com. Click on the podcast tab and then find episode 270. This episode is available at no cost, of course, on all the podcast players and YouTube, but I'll also mention it in my online course. I'll put a link to it as kind of like a bonus in the MP3 file module. All right. What happens in this episode? Why did I create this episode? Steve does a great job of explaining the benefits of hiring a podcast editor, and he also talks about how to help you find one. This content is what my podcast planning students need, and therefore it was my inspiration for this episode. By the way, if you want to watch this episode, this is a YouTube video. So go to thepharmacistvoice.com, click on the YouTube icon at the top there, or if you use the mobile version, find the YouTube icon and you can find me there. The, the website, if you want to go about it that way, is youtube.com forward slash at symbol the pharmacist voice. Again, this episode is available in both audio and video. At this time, I'll read a short introduction for my guest and then we'll roll the interview. Steve Stewart is the podcast editor for some of the biggest indie personal finance podcasts like The Stacking Benjamins Show, Afford Anything, and The Milmo Show. He also created the Podcast Editors Club, which now in March of 2024 has about 9,000 members. Congrats, Steve. He also co-founded the Podcast Editor Academy, which helps individuals build their own podcast services business. If you're looking for help with your podcast, Steve is there to support. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Steve Stewart. Hi, Steve. Welcome to the Pharmacist Voice podcast. How are you? Oh, I'm so great. Thanks for having me here. My pleasure. This is kind of a rarity. I don't have many non-pharmacists on my show. You're special. You know that? <laughs> well, I've been called different things. Special kind of relates to that word, but not in the connotation that you're using. So thank you very much. I take that as a compliment. Yes. <laughs> well, good. Good. Well, I invited you to be on the show to talk about podcast editing. I know a lot of pharmacists who want to start podcasts, and one of their barriers to entry is the whole editing part. They don't know audio editing software. They don't even know what program to use, how to press start, how to press stop, and all the things in between. But that's your jam. So I brought you on the show to talk about podcast editing. What do you think pharmacists should know about hiring a podcast editor? Yeah, well, editing is my jam. I love it. And I fell into it. Uh, I didn't even know I loved it so much until I was actually asked to do it for somebody else. And I, I was like, wait a minute, I know what a time suck it is, so I got to charge you for it. And that's kind of the whole trade of time for money thing. So what does a pharmacist need to know? Uh, let me start off with the benefits, because a lot of people will take their recordings and that's it. They, they just put it out there or they'll let AI do some post-production, which is getting better and it's still pretty good, but it may not do all the things that you want and there's going to come a price. Plus... You can't make it do everything you want it to do. Whereas if you have a team member, somebody you can outsource to, we can call them freelancers, we can call, call them contractors, they'll be able to do exactly what you want if they've got the skills to do so. And with all the tools and things out there, it's definitely doable to do almost anything that you want, whether it's video or audio or both. 
So what does a pharmacist need to know that that really I all my clients will do basically this. They do all the work in finding the topic or the guests that they want. They will schedule everything. They will do the recording. They will hit stop. They will send me a message, whether it's an email or Slack, and say, hey, Steve, we're done recording. And then I can go and retrieve the recordings from wherever they have done it, if, if it's something like a, you know online recording software uh, service. Uh, or they have to download Zoom recordings and stuff like that after using something like Zoom, which we're using right now. But after I get the files, I do everything for them. A lot of editors do everything for them and turn it into the product that you want to then share with your audience. And that is, on average, when you're talking about an audio episode, for a novice, that could be anywhere from, we'll just say it's a 60-minute recording or, or at least all the pieces of the recording uh, of an episode. It turns out to be 60 minutes of raw audio. It could be your interview plus an intro outro that you record separately. That can take four hours to edit, four to six for a novice where a professional might do it in three. What does that matter to you? It doesn't matter to you as long as you say, here, Steve, it's, it's ready to go. But when you talk about video, now you're talking about a whole, a whole nother world of things that will take maybe up to 10 hours for that one hour of audio, depending on how deep in, into it you want to go. So really, the, the choices that you make on what kind of product you want will turn into how much of a workload it is for you or for someone that you paid it to outsource to. You brought up some scary numbers, you know, talking about <laughs> how long it takes to go from idea to published kind of is, is something that you and I have talked about before with Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. I think we both submitted answers to that episode a year or so ago. And it takes me for a 15-minute solo show about three hours. And that's not wow. necessarily editing. That's that's everything. That's show notes. That's uploading everything. That's my advertising. That's everything. And actually, I think that's pretty quick. What do you think? It depends on how much prep work you want to do. And the amount of prep work that you do will help you to save time everywhere else. But then, of course, if you throw a guest in there, everything's out the window. Uh, yeah. You can have a guest who's a great speaker. Uh, let's use Michael Hyatt as a example he's a great speaker but uh, if you get somebody in there like me who's not exactly a professional speaker and we throw all these likes you knows so ands buts in there that just get to be annoying over time for 15 minutes you could probably sit through it all but for a 45 minute conversation you know if I kind of like you know if I so and you know kind of sort of maybe through this whole thing kind of you know maybe then it gets to be really annoying so it, it's the big variable there could be also guests if you have guests. But if you script your, your stuff beforehand or get an outline and you can speak from the outline with authority and it's natural for you, it could become a really great product with less post-production, less editing. But there's still some stuff you got to do. Or if you just want to wing it, you're going to have a lot of you knows and ums and stuff like that in most cases. Yeah, in my case, if I don't script some sort of an outline so it's chronological the order in which i want to say things then i talk in circles and i make the same point three times and i'm kicking myself afterwards so you're right the more preparation you do the less editing you end up doing on in post-production yeah and i tended to do that too with my own podcast i had a podcast from 2010 to 2015 and there were times where i just wanted to hammer this point and like you, it just ended up being said three times different ways. And some people call repetition the way that people learn. But then for me, it was just kind of like, okay, that's enough. We're beating a dead horse. Yeah, I don't like hearing myself do it three times. Just, just personal preference. I was having an interview yesterday that I think ended up being 30 to 45 minutes and I wanted it to be 20 to 30, but it's because she was asking me questions during it too. So I could mm -hmm. share my experiences as I shared my experiences. I caught myself doing the thing where I was talking in circles three times. And I just thought in post-production, I wonder if I can reduce that to one. <laughs> exactly. And I might yeah. be able to for the benefit of my audience, because I think once is enough. <laughs> once is enough. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned that pharmacists may not know the software that you need to edit podcasts with. There's a thousand varieties out there. It used to be pretty simple. It was an audio editor. But now with the in influence of video out there, there's video editors, which you can pull the audio from the video then if you just want audio from it. But then you've got these text-based editors like Descript or now uh, a company called Headliner has a video and audio editing product called Eddy, E-D-D-Y, which is very simple and very similar to the script, which is you're running it, you're, you're uploading your video or your audio, it transcribes it, 
and then you edit it like a Word document and it removes the video and audio from the recording for you. It's not perfect. It's, you know, AI in there and it's, it's a web-based program doing it for you, but that animal hasn't existed more than six or seven years ago. And now it's just changing the way that we can do things these days. For most pharmacists, I think what they're going to want to do is download free software such as Audacity, or maybe if they're feeling rich, they can subscribe to, what is it, Adobe? Mm -hmm. Adobe Audition? Oh yeah. 30 bucks a month or whatever it is. Like you said, there's a, a bunch of varieties out there. I use Studio One Artist, and I know that's kind of rare. Not a whole lot of people use it for podcasting, but I do, and it works for me. So yeah. most pharmacists would want some sort of an audio editing program where they press start, record the interview or the solo episode, press stop, and then hand it off to somebody. Once they hand it off to somebody, what do they get back? What is the main thing? The main thing they're going to get back is either an MP3 for file format, which is, you know, the smaller version of the, the raw recording, but edited. So you, and you can get the music that you want. Uh, you, maybe you've got some theme type brand of music that really fits your, your brand. Uh, you can have sound effects in there. Whatever kind of a format you want. If you think about the different types of shows, a lot of shows are basic. You know, you got the music play, the host introduces the show, then they introduce their guest, they have a conversation, the music plays, and you, you do your key takeaways or your outro. That's a typical one. But there's also shows out there like narrative shows which are more the NPR type shows where they're going to introduce the the little piece of audio that they're going to play from their guest and they do that throughout the thing you know and we we're talking about this and this and this is what they said and then they play the piece of tape we call it tape even though these days it's not it's not tape but that's the old days what it used to be called uh, but they, we play that piece of audio, that snippet, and then introduce something. And that takes a really long time to do. And then you've got the more audio drama or even some of the true crime shows where you're doing a lot of stuff. You're not just putting you know, pieces of voices together in different places. You're taking sound effects and making soundscapes and trying to make a more enriched environment there. And there's... 10x the work there too because you got to decide what are the sound effects how long do they play how loud are they when do they come in when do they go out stuff like that i don't see many pharmacists making audio dramas just to, right just to make my point um what I, I i wanted you to say i think you ended up saying it's the mp3 file so they give mm -hmm. you the raw audio and in return you give them a finished mp3 file which they can then upload to the media host yeah. and you have then if it's a 15 minute solo show that has taken them you know 20 or 30 minutes to stumble through it has probably taken you 60 minutes maybe two hours whatever to do the thing and create right. this mp3 file you have saved them two hours basically minimum. of time at least yeah, minimum so, I think that is, yeah, minimum. <laughs> some, hey, some people are much more, uh, more stringent. They are more strict about their product than others. Some people won't level the voices. And that takes me really to one of the other questions that I really want to ask you is, how can you find a podcast editor that, that will do all the things that need to be done without you yourself as a pharmacist not knowing that these things even need to be done? How can we find good podcast editors, Steve? Yeah, for the most part, people think they go to a, a online job posting site like Fiverr or Upwork. Fiverr, not recommended Upwork. There's some really good professionals in there, but there, it's more of like the gig economy. Like if you were to order something and have it delivered from DoorDash or Grubhub, you don't know who the delivery guy is. And you make another order and it might be delivery girl. And then you make another order and it's a delivery them. You don't know who's going to be delivering your package the next time. But when you're working with a, you're outsourcing to a person, and I'm going to talk about how I could help people find that, which is a service I provide. So this is going to be a little bit biased and one-sided, but I do think it's the best service. Uh, when you're working with a contractor, especially with a show that you're doing over and over again, you're doing new content maybe every week, every two weeks, however often you release an episode, you, you, you build that relationship. And plus, they get to be a little more efficient with what you're doing. They might be able to provide some coaching, some suggestions. I had a, a, a show today that ha had their one-year anniversary. It's not a show I edit anymore. I used to. But I was just celebrating on Twitter, hey, happy first anniversary to this show. And as I was doing that, I was like, oh, I don't have their updated artwork. Let me go get it. And I found it, and I realized that the size was too big. 
there's some dimensions and file size things that you have to consider when launching a show. And their file size was too large. I said, hey, your file size is, I sent this to the, to the show host. I said, hey, your file size is too large. You might want to use this one. And I gave it to them. No charge, just did it for them. That's something you'd be getting from somebody that you work with if you've got a good contractor. So the way you find someone, in my opinion, is you go to where the editors are, the people who are looking to edit for other people. And fortunate for me that you've got me on the show, I have that community. In fact, we're here in March of 2024 right now. I'm just about to hit 9,000 members in that group. Plus, I have an educational platform called the Podcast Editor Academy where I teach people how to do what I do, turn editing into a business. So these are people who are really gearing towards making a living, and they're going to have to provide really good customer service, of course. I have a simple process where the podcaster, the pharmacist, can fill out this Google form, which I can give you a template too, and you ask all the questions you want of somebody that you might want to outsource to. What are the things you want to know? Like, hey, uh, you know, what's your turnaround time? Do you do video? What about video shorts? Uh, you know, ask them how many episodes on an average month do you produce? If they're doing four, it could be their own show. If they're doing eight, they're doing two shows, maybe they're their own, but if they're doing, you know, 20, they're editing for other people. They're more of a professional than just the average Joe. And then, you, once you've got that form the way you want, you send me the link, or you send Kimberly the link and have her send it to me. I'm sorry, Kimberly, I just made you do some more work. But I will post that link to my community or to my academy, and the people there will then fill out the form, and then all you have to do is wait for the submissions to come in. You can download if you're using a Google form. I don't know if pharmacists are familiar, but I'm sure a lot are familiar with Google Docs and Google Forms. You can download that into a CSV file, which is like a cell spreadsheet. You can filter, sort, get rid of people that don't look like a good fit, but then contact the one, two, or three good people that are a good fit. And now you've found somebody from a pool of people who want to do the job, not the people who are just there and they're trying to, you know, just create a little bit of extra scratch when they're in a lurch with, with personal finances, but you're actually finding a team member that way. It's a much more quality uh, person, or uh, I don't want to say person, more quality uh, contractor because you know that they're looking to do this as a recurring thing for you. Yeah, you're qualifying your potential podcast editor. You're finding out uh, who out there is able to do the work. So it yeah. sounds like you are a good resource. Basically, somebody could come to you and say, hey, I need a podcast editor. And if they, the pharmacist, gives them that shopping list, this is what I need, then you can help connect them. You can be a matchmaker, Steve. Yes. Steve the matchmaker. <laughs> yep. And the beauty of the forum is that you're not getting, if, I have people who try to join my Facebook group, the Podcast Editors Club, the 9,000 member Facebook group I was mentioning, to find an editor. Well, if you walk in there and go, hey, I'm looking for an editor, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get hit with a bunch of questions. Hey, go check out my website. You're going to have recommendations, ping with people's names. They're going to DM you. Nobody has that kind of time to deal with all that, which is why the forum is so great because people have to be forced through the forum. And then you can say, hey, I only, I only want people who do you know, more than eight episodes a month and charge, you know, a, a reasonable amount of money or they have a good turnaround time because I need this done within 24 hours or something like that. You can already filter out out of 100 people really quickly. You can filter it down to 10 and then wheel it down from there. Sounds good. I appreciate that you are a matchmaker. Yeah. Another thing I appreciate you, about you is that your website has some messaging that I think pharmacists are really going to <laughs> identify with. Like, okay. Editing podcasts is so time consuming. That's on your website. And yes, that's so true. I think for any pharmacist that has a podcast that has done it any number of times has realized that it is time consuming yeah. and they just want to step up to the mic and talk. So I, I love the messaging where you talk about saving time, getting great audio and creating a relationship with somebody that you will go to again and again and just improve upon the product and the relationship over time. You say the right things and I've known you for a few years and I think you got the goods, Steve. So I appreciate <laughs> you being here to talk about yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, and if I could have one more thing to that is when you're working with a contractor who's doing this either as a side hustle or as a you know profession, they've got the tools too that you may not have. I've got this program called Isotope RX. It's a thousand dollars. Are you going to pay a thousand dollars for your podcast to do mouth declick and DSing and all do you even know to do all this stuff 
Whereas somebody like me, we're now able to buy this thousand dollar program and use it for multiple shows because that's what we do. We've got to make it sound better. So we'll have the tools as well to do a better craftsmanship on your audio than maybe you could on your own or nothing wrong with it. Maybe you know, maybe you have a uh, a friend who's in college and they're going through some kind of media training for a you know a broadcasting career. Go for it. Go for it. Give them some experience or go through uh, as I recommend. Go through my process and you know I can help them find someone. And that's a free service to help them find someone. Well, thank you. Thank you for what you do. I'm just thinking about pharmacists and, you know, bringing down these barriers so that they're they're just not afraid. They're ready to jump into the pool, so to speak. Like, you don't have to worry about the editing as long as you have Steve or somebody like him on your team. So what else, when it comes to podcast editing and podcast post-production, do you think pharmacists need to know about other than the MP3? As far as the MP3 or past it, uh, yeah, the media so, hosts, media hosts. Okay. Because there are different features you can get from different media hosts. It didn't used to be that way. The uh, for for somebody who may not, I'm sure you already taught them this, but a media host is where you upload your final product, your MP3, or if you're doing video, there's there's places for that too, and it's not just YouTube. But if you're doing an MP3, just audio, simple. Let's just talk about that because that's the majority of podcasts out there. Media hosts were pretty much the same. The, you uploaded it there, and from there is where you initially launched it to Apple, Spotify, iHeart, Amazon Music, all those places. And every time you upload a new MP3 there, they automatically get it. You don't have to do much more than just, it's like creating a blog post if people know how to create blog posts. You just create it, and then it goes out automatically. Uh, and then, of course, you do your marketing, stuff like that. But now there are these things called dynamic insertion tools. A lot of these companies now have a dynamic insertion type of technology. And to make it as easy as I can explain it, it is a way for you to mark a point, just put a pin in your audio somewhere. It's, a, it's in the media host. You go in the media host, you upload your file, and then you say, hey, at this point is where I want something dynamically inserted. So it could be an ad for a product. You know, it could be maybe, maybe better help contact you said, hey, do an ad for us. Or you've got your own thing that you're doing. You've got a webinar. You've got a newsletter you want people to sign up to. You've got whatever it is that you want to promote of your own, then you can have that dynamically inserted in there. Why not just bake it into the episode? Well, it's because later on, maybe you want to promote a book that you've written. So now you want to change out that ad from the episode you released two years ago that has that dynamic insertion point in it and have that person who's binging through all of your episodes the past two years hear the exact same current promotion that you have going on now. You mentioned Dave Jackson earlier. He does something really interesting, and I've never heard anybody do it before, but I think it's really great. He has once a month. He releases an episode every week, but once a month he does what he calls the question of the month. And that question of the month is say, hey, for you know, uh, for April of, of 2024, the question of the month is, um, you know, fill in the blank. Well, I could be listening to an episode from 2022, and I'm going to hear the question of the month for April of 2024 because he has it dynamically inserted. Whereas if I was listening to the episode from 2022 and he said, hey, the question of the month for November 2022 is, well, that question of the month has already happened, so it's irrelevant. I don't need to be hearing it. The, the dynamic insertion tool is it can be evergreen. It can change to meet your current needs, even in all of your past episodes. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, uh, advertising a newsletter would be a really good example. Or if you have a book, it's been published, so it's never going to change. You can continuously advertise that book. Or yes, you've already made your point, and thank you for letting me expand on that. But yeah, yeah dynamic exertion dynamic insertion is mm -hmm. something that could be a benefit to a pharmacist who hires an editor because don't editors then upload the mp3 or that's something that they, they could be paid to do upload yes. the mp3 set the dynamic ins insertion point and help program in the content that is dynamically inserted right yep absolutely most of the time it is we we, we create the mp3 we upload it we might insert the dynamic insertion points which is really all we need to do and schedule it out and then let you know it's there. But then we could also upload the ads because I, I have a couple clients where I get the ads and I have to send them to their agency and stuff like that to make sure it's all produced the same volume level, no background noise, all that stuff. Uh, so the dynamic insertion could be, but that's a variable that you want to ask up front when you're hiring someone to say, hey, do you, you know, what do you do? Do you, do, you, uh, do you just give me the MP3 and I do all the work or do you upload it and schedule it for me? Uh, do, do you know anything about dynamic insertion? You can ask them those questions as well just to make sure you're getting the right person uh, who's applying or, or actually just find that out from whoever you're asking, hey, do you know how to do this stuff?
Or can they explain it to you better than I did? Because that would be better than even rewatching this video and trying to figure out what I just said the past five minutes. <laughs> Sometimes there's more than one way to explain something. At least you didn't say dynamic exertion. Like I <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. We all, uh, I think we try our best. And I think you did a great job. I appreciate you bringing that up because I like to tell pharmacists who want to start the podcast and see the MP3 as the barrier that, you know, podcast editors are a way to get past that particular barrier with the MP3. But I feel like the uploading to the media host is a bonus. The whole dynamic insertion thing is a bonus. Uh, programming in ads, all the things. When you go to a professional, that's what you get. It cuts the learning curve completely, and then you can start from a completely different starting point that's farther forward. I think it's great what podcast editors do. And again, I am so glad that you're with me here today. Can well, you tell you. me, is there anything else that you think pharmacists need to know about podcast editors, their capabilities, working with them, um, what maybe what to pay them, et cetera? Well, I can tell you the average rate that's being paid to a podcast editor, a professional podcast editor. We do a survey every year in the podcast editor well, community, and we found in 2023 the average rate for 60 minutes of audio. We're just talking audio, not video and any extra stuff that comes with it. Just saying, here, Steve, here's the audio, or here, Kim, here's the audio, whoever's editing it. How much do you charge to turn this into an episode? That's it. Could Take out the MROs, noise reduction, volume leveling. Uh, put it together with the music, all that stuff. What does it cost? And the average was $189 USD. So that gives everybody a sense for what the average is. Now, we had somebody who was charging like $350, and we had somebody charging like $50. So it's, it could be anywhere in the Ranger, but that should give you at least a, a rule of thumb as far as what to expect because uh, you're not going to go to Fiverr and get it done like a professional podcast editor for 5 bucks. What length of audio was that that you that were was talking 60, about? 60. 60 60 minutes, yeah. I know you're talking about 15 on average, but you know if you get an interview with somebody, it's no less than 35 minutes because you just got to get warmed up with the guests. They've got to get into their story, and it takes a while. So yeah, 60 is a good rule of thumb as far as what we did for the survey. You can then ratchet that down to uh, what it makes sense for, for you. If you're talking about 15 minutes out of 60, then I wouldn't say you cut that price in fourth, but you can get closer to you know, 75, 80 to 100 bucks okay. an episode. And podcast editors like editing audio. I just want to make sure everybody, all the pharmacists listening to this know that because if they didn't like doing it, it wouldn't be their occupation. So yep. if you as a pharmacist do not like doing it, please hire a podcast editor or find a different way to get your MP3. You don't have to do it if you don't like it. Applause, yeah. applause to what Kim just said. Absolutely. I approve. I'm Steve Stewart and I approve of this message. <laughs> I actually love audio, audio editing. I probably shouldn't say that, but there's something in me that I just love it. It's, it just makes a lot of sense. Seeing a waveform, seeing something with my eyes that is intended to be consumed through the ear and understanding what a breath looks like and what the letter S looks like and what a wet F looks like, all that <laughs> is like super nerdy and for some reason. I love it. Yeah, it I'll is. be eating breakfast and editing audio. I just love it. It's... I don't mind it one bit, but I am not normal. <laughs> well, if you get to be like Mary doing all the time, you get to see like the matrix, you know, uh -huh, yes. how you can read the matrix, but it's in a waveform. And you, oh, there's an um, there's an um, there's an um, there's a breath. I need to silence the breath, you know. <laughs> and you, you look at what you're editing and when there's a conversation, there's a typical pattern of how many seconds are between when the host stops speaking and the guest starts speaking and you get a rhythm with it so that there is an if there is an um or a loud breath you can insert silence in that exact interval and it sounds very normal and yeah. that's what podcast editors do they just know their stuff and mm -hmm. i am secretly a podcast editor <laughs> don't tell anyone they're going to start my own stuff <laughs> they contact you when you're using studio 1 now, yeah, I do use Studio One, and <laughs> yeah, I, I do love what I do, but uh, I am rare, and I know that. And for any pharmacist out there, I don't want you to think that you have to enjoy editing audio too, or eat breakfast while you do your audio editing like I do. It's just something that is optional, and you need to know that because when I started my podcast, I didn't know it was optional. I, I went into audio production because I am a 
pharmacist, voice actor, podcaster, and it's just part of my craft. I just expected to do it myself, but nobody ever said, if you would rather spend more money, sorry, if you would rather spend more time doing income generating activities with your voiceover business, you can farm out your podcast editing to somebody yeah. else. Nobody ever way, had that conversation with me. Yes. And one way you can think about that too is how much do you want to pay someone? Just because I gave you an average of 189 for 60 minutes of audio doesn't mean that's what you have to pay. What do you want to pay for it? And then what I would do then is how much time would it take you to do it yourself? Let's say it takes you two hours. Let's say you make on average as a pharmacist, a hundred bucks an hour. And I have no idea if that's relevant. I'm making big round numbers. People can add a hundred and a hundred come to 200 really fast, right? You could pay somebody 200 bucks and get your two hours of life back or pay him a hundred bucks and you made an extra hundred when you're doing the time value exchange there. So to put that into consideration. How much of your time is it worth to do it yourself? If, if you make five bucks an hour or make a thousand bucks an hour, uh, you know, that's going to play into what you might want to pay somebody else. That is a really good point because sometimes you are, yes, trading time and money, right? Trading money for your time back. But then also there's something that happens when you you pay somebody to do something, you actually get it done, you know? And there is a lot of value in that because some people beat themselves up when they don't do things that they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of pharmacists out there that are perfectionists. We spend a lot of time not killing people with medicine. And we translate that to all aspects of our life. We have to be perfect with everything that we do. And if we say we're going to do something, we have to do it, whether, whether it kills us or interrupts our family or not. And there's just other ways to do it. And podcast editors could be part of your podcast pharmacists and, out there <laughs> and they could be your accountability partner because if you know you got to yeah. get something done for them by a certain date you're gonna you're more likely to do it than to sit there and oh what's on netflix tonight because i don't feel like it you're gonna push yourself to get down to your work studio or wherever and you're gonna sit in front of the computer and you're gonna come up with your idea and that might be the starting point to get you energized about the next episode oh i really oh this is something that really should be you know talked about this is great Yes, all good points. Steve, as we start to wrap this up, is there anything else you'd like to add or plug your business? If I could say one thing about uh, convincing people that their show needs to be edited, because a lot of people say, oh, it's just got to be real out there. Let it all go. I know pharmacists are a little more perfectionistic than, than a lot of other people are, but if you have a good podcast editor, they're going to edit out about 12 to 18 percent of the content. That's just an average. It just seems to happen no matter what. I don't know. I can't explain what it is that they're editing out. It just always seems to be you record 60 minutes, you get 53 back or whatever it is, you know, 12 to 15, uh, 18% back. For those who keep that stuff in there, you're leaving that out there for people to listen to. So what if, you, if you're not editing, what are you letting people hear? Now, it could be extra ums or ahs, but we found that shows that are over 60 minutes have less completion rate than shows that are under 60 minutes. I know you're talking about shorter episodes than that, but if you've got a... 60 minute episode and you can make it 53 minutes, you're going to have a better completion rate, which is good for a whole bunch of things. You want people to get to the end and not drop off. So an editor that's good, you won't even know that they were there and they're going to shorten your episode, which makes it more likely to be listened to all the way through, get to that call to action that most people put at the end. There's a real benefit that most people don't think about because it's almost a non-monetary value for why the show should be edited in a professional way. You're making me want my podcast edited <laughs> because I feel like there's so many benefits that I didn't think of even before today. The dynamic ad insertions, something that I've never done. I could hire a podcast editor just to do that one, one little thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like a la carte when you say you don't necessarily have to get the podcast editor to create the MP3. You could do some of these other things kind of a la carte too. Accountability partner kind of situation too. I think you brought up some great points, Steve. Yeah, Thank you. Coaches, you could outsource to all kinds of things. They don't have to be editors either. You can work with a marketing company that does some of that for you. But as far as the post-production of the audio or the video, yeah, get a podcast editor. Very good. And then if that is almost something that I feel like a pharmacist could wean themselves off of. Not that I'm trying to put you out of a job, but if they work with a podcast editor and 
see how it's supposed to be done and try to do it themselves and build up their confidence, then that could be a, a, just as an entry point. I think everybody needs an entry point that makes sense to them. And I feel like if you're a pharmacist out there and you are thinking about starting a podcast and creating an MP3 file is the thing that's keeping you from starting your podcast, just use the podcast editor as your entry point. Let that be okay with you. And then if you really want to do it all yourself eventually, then you know, wean yourself off of that. I bet a podcast editor, as much as they appreciate the business, they want to see you succeed. So I think they would give you good advice. Better I to see, see them succeed than for them to pod fade and not do the show anymore because it's a time suck and they don't like doing that part. And it's too hard and too time consuming, all that stuff. Yeah. I've seen it happen way too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. I've seen it too. And as disappointing as it is, because I love the shows, I understand that it does happen. So no shame. I'm not trying to throw shade out there. <laughs> it happens. If you have to pod fade, then it happens. But yeah. don't let it be because you didn't hire that podcast editor that could keep it going for you. Yeah. Yep. And transparency, I pod faded. I let my show end at episode 200. And I was going to start a new one and never did. I got into this instead. So life, there's life changes in your future roll with it but don't just uh let a little thing like working with somebody else on your stuff on your art don't let that keep you from from doing it yeah good points well made thank you steve stewart for being with me here on the pharmacist voice podcast take care thank you thanks again to steve stewart for being my guest today on episode 270 of the pharmacist voice podcast I'd like to recap the benefits of hiring a podcast editor, and then I'd like to talk about the Google form that Steve mentioned, the one that will help you find your podcast editor. I used the form, I found an editor, and I would like to tell you about that experience. Here we go. I broke the benefits of hiring a podcast editor down into five groups of comments. Number one, Editing MP3 files is time consuming, especially when you're new. A podcast editor will save you time and frustration, the cost of expensive tools. I believe Steve talked about RX10, which cost him $1,000. And also a podcast editor could possibly coach you maybe a little bit into becoming a better podcaster. For example, they could teach you about using separate host and guest tracks for a podcast interview. That's good information. Number two, audio quality matters a lot. A good podcast editor will improve the listening experience for your audience so the audience can focus on what you and maybe your guest as well are saying instead of feeling distracted by poor audio quality and excessive filler words. Number three, publishing on a regular basis. A regular basis builds trust with your audience. If you have a podcast editor, you also have an accountability partner. That's good news. If you and your editor agree on a deadline, you can work with them to get your episodes published on time. Number four, relationships and trust take time to develop. Building a relationship with the right podcast editor for you is no different. If you're a pharmacist who wants to start a podcast and you don't know how to edit and you don't want to learn how to edit, I'm giving you permission to hire an editor. So many pharmacists that I work with need to hear that. Really, they do. They think they have to do everything themselves. You have my permission to hire an editor, build a relationship with them, and create amazing podcast episodes. Sometimes all you need is a little help from a podcast editor. And finally, number five on my list, a la carte services can help you level up your podcast. That's good news. Keep in mind that podcast editors may be able to add value to an existing podcast or just get you on the board just in case you haven't started yet. So keep in mind that podcast editors not only can do the simple stuff, but then they can do the a la carte stuff too, like the ad insertion or uploading everything to your media host for you. Think about what it is that you need or that you want to pay somebody for, and then hire an editor. It is totally fine. You have my permission to hire a podcast editor. Right. That does it for my recap of the benefits of hiring a podcast editor. At this time, I'd like to talk about the Google form that Steve mentioned. It is the form that will help you find your very own podcast editor. 
The form has a top half and a bottom half. In the top half, you as the podcaster create a description of what your needs are. So this is the description that goes to all the podcast editors that may be interested in editing your podcast. And then the bottom, which you get to type in also, is all of the questions that you want the podcast editors to respond to, such as contact information, samples of their work, how much they charge. So think of all of the questions that you need answered, type them in the bottom half. Now, if you're wondering, why do I need a podcast editor? I just talked in this episode about how I love podcast editing. Yes, of course I do, but I have a vacation coming up in May and I would like to get ahead of schedule so I don't have to worry about podcasting before I get ready for vacation, while I'm on vacation, or when I come back from vacation. I have been running an episode every single Friday since 2019, and I don't want to change that. I would like to continue publishing new episodes every single Friday, even when I'm on vacation. I've never been gone quite this long and had to set things up ahead of time. I think I need a podcast editor. I need a little bit of help. It is hard for me to admit that, but it is true. I need a little bit of help. So when I filled out the form, what I needed may be different from what you need. Everybody's entitled to ask for whatever it is that meets their own needs. I needed, I needed honestly, the accountability piece. So having somebody that is working with me to get these episodes done on time. Number two, I needed somebody to assemble things for me. I have my interviews. I would like somebody to assemble the intro and the outro with the host and guest tracks. Usually I do that. I'm great at it, but it's time consuming. If I hire an editor, it will get done in less time. And then the third thing is mastering. I like to make sure that my host and guest tracks are at the same volume. And I also like to take out the mouth noises. When I publish episodes on YouTube, you may be able to hear the mouth noises because I don't edit the audio on my YouTube videos. Please excuse me if you hear any mouth noises. <laughs> But anyways, that is what I need a podcast editor for, and I'm looking forward to staying on schedule, getting everything queued up so I can go on vacation, enjoy myself, and not have to worry about anything. Whatever your needs are, figure those out, fill out the Google form, and hire your own podcast editor. If you're curious about my experience, feel, feel free to reach out. The contact form on my website is the best way to get in touch with me. That's thepharmacistvoice.com. Click on the contact tab leave me a message. All right, that may not sound like much, but I will get back to you about my experiences. And I would like to give a shout out to Engine Hassan. He is my podcast editor. Thank you very much for helping me out with this episode. As a surprise, Steve didn't know this, but I hired Engine Hassan, a podcast editor, to help me with this episode. Why would I do that? So I could give you some feedback. As an audience, I'm sure that you appreciate my personal experiences. Plus, that experience for me gives this episode a full circle feel. It comes full circle. We talked about the benefits of hiring a podcast editor. We talked about the Google form. I shared my experience with it. It's a full circle moment for me, and I am glad that I did it. All right, let's wrap this episode up. Thanks again to Steve Stewart for being my guest today to talk about podcast editors and his Google form, which might help you, my listener, to find your very own podcast editor. Thanks to Enjin Hassan for helping me put this episode together and being my editor. I'm looking forward to working with you. And thank you, my audience, for listening to episode 270 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes today, you will find a lot of links. We've got Steve Stewart's website and social media links, the Google form that we talked about that will help you find your podcast editor, my podcast planning course for pharmacy professionals, my social media links, and more. Now, do me a favor. If you know a pharmacist who wants to start a podcast or they need a podcast editor, please share this episode with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Thanks for listening today.
I'll talk to you next Friday.